I have a bit of a metaphor for being a freelancer. I have often described freelancing as standing on the edge of a cliff for your whole life. I think I, I was becoming a photographer before I knew I was becoming a photographer. I went to Syracuse to become a writer. I, I you know, joined up at the Newhouse School and I thought, you know, I was always a wannabe athlete in high school, you know, I kind of, you know, did some sports and always enjoyed that. I thought, well, you know, maybe I'll be a sports writer. I like to write and this would be a way I could meld those two, you know, interests. You know, I run my own business. I've been a, a freelance photographer for ooh, 35 years or so. I've had a couple of staff photography jobs along the way, but it's by and large been a freelance enterprise for me. My dad was pretty artistic. He enjoyed, you know, documenting family activities. And he had also gotten a picture book. I still have it. Uh, it's a pictorial history of World War II. And it was, you know, he had been in, in, in the war and in, uh, in the Second World War and he had this book and it was a, it was a, it's a mess of a book. It's an old style layout book with hodgepodge pages, nothing clean like you have today. But I remember as a kid, probably, you know, five, six years old, just going through that book again and again to the point that I, to this day, I remember not just pictures, I remember layouts. Like I know some of the pages in that book just now just that come to my head. And I remember just being amazed, first off, that, you know, stuff that happened in World War II happened, you know, as a young child, like, oh my God, you know. Um, and then also the fact that there were these people out there who were actually taking pictures of it, you know. And uh, I just was fascinated without, again, extrapolating that or thinking at that moment like, oh, well, I'll be a photographer. Nothing like that occurred. But I think over the course of that time, just watching my dad and, um, you know, this, this experience I had with this book and then also just kind of having a good imagination, that I was probably becoming a photographer right then without knowing it. Additional roles in your life, like being a father, you know, uh, those uh, can oftentimes, uh, I, I've actually written this, there are days where you choose to be a good father and therefore are a very poor photographer. And there are days when you have chosen to be a good photographer, which does have the penalty, if you will, of being a bad father, like being away, being uh, 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 working extraordinary hours, not seeing your children, not, uh, not being around for them in, in, in many, you know, uh, extensive situations because the kinds of work that I've done over the years has, have involved long stints for the National Geographic where I'll go to someplace like Africa and I couldn't even call, you know, for three or four weeks at a time. So uh, that, you know, could be easily, widely viewed and accurately viewed as a detriment you know, to your family life. It's, it has an emotional cost. What a lot of people who get into this industry don't understand is the very high emotional cost of it and physical wear and tear and also financial risk that's involved. The idea of arriving photographically is, is foreign to me, to be honest. You never really arrive because you never actually will ever shoot your best photograph. Uh, you'll never shoot the picture. Um, the next picture that you hopefully anticipate will be better than the one you just shot, which you might have thought was like a pretty cool photograph. So the idea of actually arriving, like here's a destination and now photographically you've arrived, I tend not to subscribe to, you know. Um, for us, it's a struggle. It's an ongoing struggle. And I'm very honest about that in terms of how difficult this is to do uh, to maintain a certain financial balance. So you're, you're enabled to continue to go do work that you like to do in addition to doing work that you have to do. I'm a people photographer. Uh, I don't find a great deal of inspiration in the land. I admire it, you know, um, beautiful still life photography, like, wow, so that's amazing. You know, God, I could never do that. Uh, to this, that's all to the side. I, I am resolutely at the end of the day fascinated with people. I'm curious about people. I think that's a big, big piece of equipment that you have to have in your bag is an essential curiosity about the human condition, how other people live, what their lives are like, what their physical environments uh, are. Uh, I think it's, I think America is a very insulated country in many ways. We look inwardly a great deal. And I think one of the principal things you can do to educate yourself is look outwards. And a, being a photographer forces you to do that. You have to take a look at other worlds and other peoples 
and all sorts of topic matters from science to sports to uh, religion to you name it, you know, and you become a little bit of an expert on a whole bunch of different stuff. You have a glancing blow off of um, various topics because you are admitted as a journalist, because you have this camera in your hand, you're admitted into people's lives for a cursory amount of time. So it's a brief, sometimes intense involvement. Sometimes it goes deeper than that, but oftentimes it's like, uh, as Jay Maisel says, very famous photographer in New York City, he says, being a photographer is a license to steal experience. You have this window, this view on all sorts of different things. You don't necessarily stick with any one thing, I mean, certain photographers have, but that's not generally the rule. But you get this window on a whole wide range of human activity. Photography is such an all points of the compass thing that it's hard to come up with that magic bullet that addresses all of it. You know, you have to be alert, you have to be on top of trends, you have to be an observer of the world, you have to be all those things. I think at the end of the day, the the one uh, thing that I would I would caution or or sort of offer as a notion that a lot of people bypass because they get involved in the idea of you know being visually brilliant or uh, all the technology or stuff like that at, at its rock bottom what you need to be successful in this business is outside of talent and you have to be have talent and all of that stuff is to be tenacious you have to understand that when you get into this uh, industry you're going to hear no much more than you're going to hear yes and you have to be comfortable with that and you have to just bull your way through it because um, there are people out there, I swear to God, their full-time job is to tell photographers no, you know, um, and, uh, you know, no, can I shoot this? No, you have to stand over here. No, I won't sign a release. No, you can't. This is too sensitive. You need uh, just to take a picture in this classroom of all these children. You have to get 40 releases from every parent of every child here. I mean, it's very daunting to drill your way through this stuff. So you have to, at the end of the day, be very tenacious and maybe overriding everything is you have to love this.